Victoria's here to help us solve your printer problems. Print Fix Friday, episode 188. Brief burst before blockages begin. Fragile, FedEx's favorite fight, and decade-long decay dulls durability. All this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 188. Let's get into it. Starting off from Illuminated Technologies, who tweeted at us and a few others saying the bamboo firmware lockdown behavior increases. As expected, sadly, this should come as really no surprise to anybody. However, before you start lighting your pitchforks or your butane torches here, you should know that this was coming. You knew about this. And so far, it is only a very, very slight limitation that realistically, I don't think it's that big of a deal. This is the 2.0.2 .2 release of Bamboo Studio, which brings support for the AMS2 to the X1 and P1 series. We can see that for that AMS2, AMS2 Pro, and AMS HT, that they need to be at firmware 1.09 or later. So while, okay, sure, this is pushing for further control, you kind of knew this. Now, I'm a little bit bummed about this. I didn't think this was going to come with a necessary firmware add-on because I was looking at the new AMS 2 saying, hey now, an AMS with a heater? I know it's not the HT, it doesn't go that hot, but an AMS, a four slot AMS with a heater so I can drive four spools at once? That sounds great to me. I'm, I'm here for it. Machine will have to be on new firmware to do it. And that means that's a no for me, dog. This is one of those cases where you should be just voting with your wallet. If you're fine with this, just go with it. If you're not fine with it, then don't do it. We saw this coming. You all should have known this. If this is coming as a surprise to you, you must be new here, and if that's the case, it's totally fine. Welcome to the channel. My name is Grant, and this is 3D Musketeers, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose, and this is what we do here on Print Fix Friday. It's okay, there are options, but those options are likely not to include the new AMSs. However, IBOS released something where they've made a new hat, basically, for the AMS that gives it heating capabilities, so your OG AMS can now also be a heater. So. That's probably what we're going to end up doing. So if you guys want to see us do that fun little mod, let us know and maybe we'll do a live stream or something with it. Let us know in those comments and write it out for me. I'd love to have like proper legit discussions in those comments. And hey, while you're down there, check out our merch store, which is shop.3dmusketeers.com where you can pick up some awesome cat shirts with some new shirts coming soon. So keep an eye on it. Let's move on here. We've got not extruding well after 10 minutes, broken printer part, or just a setting. I've tried messing with settings galore, but for some reason recently it has been doing this after a few layers. We've got a print that is basically jamming up after a few layers. My best guess here is that your fan is either not blowing in the right direction or it's not blowing at all. I had this problem with my Prusa XL, and it took me longer than I cared to admit to figure it out. Mainly because the XL is so high, I actually can't see into the fans from the tool heads themselves. But it was nice because the XL has a thermistor in the heat break, and I was able to check it and see the heat break was at 67 degrees Celsius. So of course PLA was not going to print very well. It's too darn hot. The actual fan had got a little bit of print material stuck in it and was refusing to spin. For this particular machine, Check to make sure your fan is spinning. If it is, make sure it's spinning in the right direction. You want your fan to be pushing air across it, not pulling air through it. Normally, these fans are designed in a push configuration, not a pull configuration. So do check that and make sure that's going okay. If it is still an issue, make sure that that heat break isn't getting too hot and that heat sink isn't getting too hot. This one's a little bit odd, but you have to trust me on it. If the printer is moving, be a little bit careful, but you can just heat it up and leave it there for a bit. Touch the heat sink. Does it feel hot to you? If you have a K-type thermocouple laying around in a multimeter that can read it, stick it on the heat sink and see if it does get warm. If it does, it's 
time to replace that fan. The fan maybe has a broken blade or it's dying, whatever it is. By and large, this is from heat creep. The filament gets too warm in the heat sink and starts to soften and you can't easily push a rope anymore. It doesn't work because it's too soft. And then it gets clogged and it doesn't work. You can generally fix this by unloading the filament, cutting it, putting it back in, and it will go back to printing just fine until it heats up the filament too much and it goes through this problem once again. Because this isn't happening right at the beginning of the print, it's likely not a clogged nozzle. We don't see any indications of wet filament because as you know, it's almost never wet filament. And because we don't see indications of that, drying your filament is likely not going to do anything. If you still want to dry it, that's totally fine. Likely not going to do anything. It's not gonna likely hurt anything either. So I would check your heat sink or hot end cooling fan, not the part cooling fan, the one that blows air across the hot end. Make sure that it's pointing in the right direction and life should be good. Next up, FedEx took the fragile sticker as a challenge. Brand new H2D. FedEx managed to destroy both the front door and the control panel. Yeah, God, that's, that's a heck of a hit right there. I mean, that is, you gotta be mad to do that kind of damage and you gotta be Uncle Jesse to do that kind of damage. We can see the box has a little bit of damage to it, but nothing that anybody would consider excessive. And from my experience, Bamboo's packaging is basically second to none. We can see they thought of this ahead of time, and they've done this since the X1 series, where they put the glass door inside of a plastic bag. So if it does shatter for whatever reason, the glass is contained inside of that bag. Companies that ship things with glass in it should absolutely take note from Bamboo on this one. I think that is an absolutely incredible thing. Bamboo is no stranger to these kinds of challenges. We've seen multiple machines end up with shipping damage, and ultimately you can't always blame the company for it. Yes, if this becomes a common problem that we see, it might be time to go back to the drawing board and look at packaging things a little bit differently, but traditionally, Bamboo does a good job with this. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up my inner jerry-rig everything and say, well, glass is glass and glass breaks. This is an unfortunate issue and we can see that there was absolutely some point loading that occurred on the actual box itself that caused this damage. But I do believe that issues like this provide exemplary learning experiences for the company so they can see in some of the highest levels of abuse how they can look at solving the problem. What's Bamboo gonna do? They're gonna send you a new door, they're gonna send you a new screen, they're gonna get you taken care of. It does suck that you can't print with the machine immediately at all. Like if you didn't have a front door, you could still print a little bit, but the screen is shot. You might get lucky and it's only like that front glass and it might still work underneath. I, I, I don't 100% know. Like when you crack the glass, on your phone screen how sometimes it still functions because you didn't crack the actual LCD below it or OLED panel below it, you cracked the glass protective layer. At least the rest of the machine looks okay. I would verify by just getting it out of the packaging a little bit further that the motion system isn't damaged because a hit like that could likely tweak a bit of the motion system. I am seeing this top comment saying so many broken units showing up. They should know that shippers ignore fragile stickers. Bamboo should be packaging these better. I have not seen very many of these that have been through this particular problem. If you're one of those people, let me know and let me know how Bamboo has treated you throughout this whole thing. I have reasonable faith that they're going to be good about it, but ultimately there's only so much a company can do to prevent a shipper from really doing a bad job. If you made it as if it was Bubble Boy, they'd still find ways to pop it. We have an individual here with a box of almost 10 year old PLA plastic, 60% ambient humidity, 30 degrees Celsius for the, I guess, enclosure, if you will, inside the box. But take a look at these parts. Yo. That is really, really soft. So my best guess here is different blends of materials will degrade differently, especially if it is going to be a glow-in-the-dark variant. 
back in the before bamboo days or many, many years ago, 10 years ago, right? PLA was not the easiest material to come by. It was still very expensive, like 40 to $60 a kilo. And when you could find it reasonably cheap, you got it from sketchy eBay sellers and you were taking an absolute risk. Glow in the dark specifically, which uses strontium illuminate, if I'm correct, to get that glow in the dark pigment. Back then, they dumped pigment in like they were Oprah giving away cars. And I'm guessing that's what's happened here is that the pigment over the years has started to degrade and break down the actual plastic. This is not an example of biodegradation from PLA. PLA is not biodegradable. I know that so many of us were told for years that PLA does biodegrade and technically under ideal perfect conditions and under pressure PLA can but true biodegradation is only currently accomplished by one type of plastic in the 3d printing industry and this is PHA we have some PHA here and we're going to be talking all about it here coming up hopefully relatively soon we're going to get some time scheduled to go up and take a look and a chat with the manufacturers that make it polar filaments if you guys want to see that please let us know in those comments because i love the idea of properly marine biodegradable plastics and some of the examples that i've seen of using pha is super super awesome and using it as a raw 3d printable material means you don't have to feel bad when you have really big print failures because they will literally degrade if you just dig a hole and put them in your yard last but not least prints always shrinking at the bottom so we've got a lulzbot taz with a 0.25 millimeter grid strength 20 percent infill wall count is two top and bottom is four yada yada what we're looking at here is the underside of supports looking like crap. This particular model is going to have a bad time to print, really no matter how you do it. The best way would be to try to print it standing straight up like this, but you will still have that bottom one be a particular problem. As soon as it gets away from the underside of that sphere, the parts start looking a lot better. And that is because it's not being supported all that well and the print is moving so fast that it can't easily cool itself down. The best way to handle this is to actually cut the bottle in half, split it right down the middle, print it in two halves, and then super glue it together. If you're feeling like you want to play with a little bit of chemistry, get yourself some 3D glue, links are in that description, a chemical adhesive that will keep those parts from ever coming apart again literally we've tried like florida man has put the entire florida man behind a tug of war against gloops robot jeff you're under arrest florida man says so and a huge congratulations to the gloop team because if you haven't seen it yet they actually have a huge building now where they're going to be upping their production of gloop to well get the good sticky wherever you are in the world back to the actual parts cutting it gluing it is absolutely the best way print it so the domes are facing upwards and you'll have significantly fewer issues with print quality and theoretically it should go a lot faster because you're not dealing with supports either if you want your prints to look a little bit better you can go ahead and use the 0.2 or 0.15 millimeter layer heights just be careful because i do believe that most lulzbot comes stock with a 0.5 millimeter nozzle and not a 0.4 we recommend to change that out for a 0.4 we did on our taz 6 as soon as I broke off the 0.5 in a print. That's a long story for another day, but we never really looked back and have used 0.4 as a standard across the bulk of our machines ever since. And if you do need any help, you can reach out to us, YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com. We're here to help. And if you have any fails that you would like to submit, you can reach out to us on the social medias. Heck, make a YouTube video and tag us in it so we can show it in a Print Fix Friday episode. And if you do want to support the efforts that we do, you can do so by joining for as little as $1 a month, but at the $5 chain, how you get your names listed right next to me, along with all these other awesome people that help make videos like this possible. Thank you to all of those that help this kind of thing happen, because without you, we probably wouldn't be doing this almost 200 episodes deep. And hey, there was cat content in this one, which if you want to see it, Make sure to support us because you'll get access to the catting room floor where you get to see shenanigans and things that don't actually make it into the real videos. If you do like this series and want to see more about it, you can click right below me. And right next to that will be one of our recent tours of Prusa Research where you can see, well, how they make printers and, you know, what kind of shenanigans we've gotten up to while we're over in Prague. 
That is all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. You will want to make sure that your heat break. Jesus Christ. Come on. Jeez, scared the crap out of me there, cat.